<laughs> There's your Bob Connie's chicken. <laughs> Here's Cluck Cluck. <laughs> See, we have three of these kind, these barred rocks that are the ones that won't stay in the on the farmyard. They keep coming in the back area. So the first one's name is a little darker, is Cluck. This one's Cluck Cluck. The third one is Cluck Cluck Cluck. And if you believe that, please don't. <laughs> so you gonna say hi? I call them chicken. Yeah. And they leave it. They lay us eggs, but you know I did find them homes, new homes, but that didn't work out. Do you want to smell a cheeky? So this is what the monster chickens are. By the way, whoever asked the questions, thanks. I'll get you. I'll get you. Do you really want? Do you want do to really clean up? How do I do it? This and Greg, you have to grab the feet. Feet? Uh-huh. Okay. Hey, take a good look because I <laughs> probably won't do this very often. <laughs> there it is. Oh, somebody ought to take a pretty? snapshot. Mm -hmm. They are. They're beautiful. They're my, They're our girls. Oh God, I'll start liking them. I know. I'm going to start bringing <laughs> chicken feed with me. <laughs> She's just normal grooming. Connie, you were so brave. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. You Very didn't. <laughs> you didn't eat you up on the way out. No, no. I put him down and I went to pet him. He's probably. He's probably going to go tell his buddy. <laughs> that Connie, she knows how to handle us now. <laughs> I can just figure out how to do it. Okay, we have, I always scoop, have to scoop back. We have one package, and Bella got a card today, so we'll read that. And we have to watch her. I, we did take the collar off, and she's she's doing a normal grooming on herself, so we just have to watch that she just does a normal groom. And we have two things, two envelopes to open up, too. So this one is... Um, Oh, it's, it's uh, handicappedpets.com. NH New Hampshire. Boy, these are sharp. What are they doing? They look like they're all guilty over there. No. Connie needs a great big. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Connie. She's filling in. Um, usually her day is just Sunday afternoon. Um, yesterday afternoon she was filling in for Peggy S. Today she's filling in for our Greg is gone. He's golfing. And then tomorrow is three days in a row. Plus, she, um, uh, Becky couldn't come tonight, so she's helping with that too. Oh my gosh, Bella, you have hit the jackpot again. Oh, this is from Bernice J. Oh, from Utah. Yeah, this is this is a collar. You know, all these things that you guys are so awesome. You've been sending to help us out. Um, in the future, we always have something that we can use it on, and so we've been using various things for her. And I, these are really nice. This is what I was trying to make with that one. 
uh, plastic canvas where it's real wide, but obviously she could bend it and get it around. These these really are nice, but they also sent the handicappets.com. This is about that dog wheelchair and all kinds of different things are in here to help handicap kitties and doggies. So, oh my gosh, we'll take a look at this too. <laughs> Do I smell like chicken? <laughs> she likes her <laughs> Yeah. Thank you, Bernice. This this is um one of those collars that's the wrap around and uh, they're they're non flexible this way so it's not that big jutting cone that sticks out. Can can you give me that ear one too? Bella's been wearing this one a lot. I've been putting the cone one on her at night, but she's been wearing this one a lot uh, too. And this this is actually I'm very impressed with this too. It's the first time I actually used one of the air ones. And that has worked really nice. Uh, we'll try this one too so that we know. And it's on Velcro. Oh, this is this is awesome. It's all Velcro, so it, it'll work real good. Um, I'll have to check and see what this does, but we probably don't need that on, on a kitty. But, um, yeah, these, these are really nice. That way they can have their, their snout out, can eat and drink, and not have to worry about that uh, the cone, that big cone thing. You know, you guys are awesome. I just, uh, that's all I can say. You guys are just awesome. Bella, you got another color. We're going to try that one, too, on you, girly. And she says, I promise I'll be good. I won't lick it. I won't well, lick it. Well, since, we're, since we don't have a lot of stuff to open, um, I'll give you a quick update on Bella right now. Um, but Bernice, Bernice J. is from Ogden, Utah. And I so appreciate that very much. And I'll enjoy looking at that handicapped um, magazine too or uh, supply catalog. <laughs> You're a nut. Um, Bella's had a really good day. We're only giving her pain meds like maybe twice a day instead of three times a day. And it's really making her sleepy. And today she has really slept a lot like she did yesterday. And did she eat good for you, Connie? No. Not real good? Okay. She did She did eat good yesterday for Connie. She did eat good um, this morning. So her appetite's off a little bit, but remember she's getting antibiotics and the pain meds, and sometimes those kind of icky your stomach. So um, she's her incision looks real good. She's got a little bit of serum drainage coming out today. That's okay. That's to be expected. Uh, what we don't want is for the incision to be so tight or swollen that instead of leaking out the serum, it builds up. Because if it builds up and becomes a ball of serum, then we have to... Uh, drain that but right now it's it's got a nice little leak I guess you could say expect that to happen after surgery on something like this uh, today when Stacy made her bed which Stacy cracks me up she makes it like this thick about this thick she's got blankets and blankets in there I had her down here on the rug a little while she liked it I think she also wanted to thought she was going to get to go but um She's, you can tell she's not 100%, but definitely feeling good. So, Bella, we love you. She says, i got to have that other thing on my neck. Yes. Then we got a card for Bella. This is from Cat Lover 14. We'll have to, we can hang, tape up her card inside her pens. That way the volunteers can read them, too. <coughs> it's got a cat on it. Oh, excuse me, it says, sorry you're not feeling well, Bella. Here's hoping your next shot <laughs> comes in a baby food jar. <laughs> That's cute. Hugs and kisses from Cat Lover 14 and Jenny. Her first card. <laughs> That's cute. They all know you love those chicks. Bella. Um, oops. I have to lost my teeth. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, I hate it when things are clean. I'll hang that up inside Bella's pen there at the top so that um, the volunteers can see that also. 
and we got two checks today I wanted to share with you. You know Pat that comes on Thursday night. Uh, I had mentioned a few weeks ago that for every uh, 25 hours that she she works at Walmart and for every 25 hours that she uh, works here the store donates five they'll do it five times a year a check for five two hundred and fifty dollars so we got that two hundred and fifty dollars which is good because I some of you might know I've just spent two to three hours inside writing bills my personal bills but bills then for the rescue center and for the for the uh, rep, for the clinic I still have some there so this is a big wonderful thing so Walmart Walmart's awfully good to us and I appreciate it you know they they do this so they will do this five times in every year for the two, 25 hours and it doesn't take long to, for her to accumulate that 25 hours it's pretty cool I wish we all could go work at Walmart <laughs> um, and also they donate a lot of their uh, cat food and dog food and even bird seed if it's been damaged then they can't send it back they just stockpile it and then Tara bless her heart we don't even have to go get it Tara will deliver it to us and sometimes she'll unload it and put it all away before I even realize that Tara's here so um, super nice people that works there Da 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 Pet Earth, this is from the PetFounder.com <coughs> Foundation. This is what we all, you all, we all here worked on and worked on. Yeehaw, look at this. The check for the thousand dollars. This is from the Animal Rescue site. It says, Dear Friends of Felines Rescue Center, congratulations. You were the group with the most votes during the week of October 3 to October 9 for round four of the Animal Rescue Site and PetFinder.com challenge. Enclosed, you will find a check for $1,000 for having the highest total of votes in a one-week period. While winning a weekly award does exclude you from being eligible for regional prizes in this round of voting, your group is still eligible for the final $5,000 grand prize or, or the heartwarming story contest prizes. Make sure you keep those votes coming in. We hope that you will join us in thanking our friends at the Animal Rescue Site for their generous sponsorship. Yeah, I, I, um, e I, there's an email address there that I can write to to thank them for that. So... Onward ho to the $5,000, we hope, we hope, that's what we're winning. We're still in the lead. I think we dropped like a, what would that have been, a tenth of a point or something yeah. like that. But the one that's under us dropped three of those points. So we're still, we're still doing really good. And I remember the very, very, very first time we ever did that, the animal planet, or the animal um, rescue site. And we were I think like 43 or something in the state or it was just I was thrilled I thought that was awesome and then each time we've moved up and moved up and then last quarter is when we hit in the top 10 in one one of the weekly ones but uh, we ended up in fourth fourth place was it wasn't it Connie I think it was fourth so it just makes my heart go thinking that maybe we could win that five thousand dollars. So keep voting, voting, voting for us. And are you laying on my paper? Yes, you are. I have just a few updates for today. Um, and also just to let you know, a week from today, Bella also gets her sutures out. So one more week of um, till that comes out, till those come out, and then she still has. Oh, what day was her surgery on? It was on a Tuesday. No, it wasn't. It was on a Wednesday or Thursday, gosh. Yeah, she's got a ways to go yet to have to have bed rest. And then uh, we will probably be extremely careful with the amount of pressure that's on that because it's going to be touch and go on that. If she gets really antsy in here after her sutures come out, we can bed down. Uh, June's room really thick. We'll just ask Stacy to help us. She's good at doing that, making it nice and 
thick and comfortable. And um, that way she can have a little bit more room. But she seems to be doing real good in here. Um, Tuki was adopted today. That was that was um, a little different than how I thought it was going to go. These people are from Dayton. And her, Connie is her name. Her mom uh, is Alice, who I think I'll, I've already mentioned that I used to work in uh, ICU with her for years. And she's a really cool person also. But... Connie's husband worked late and they were not able to get here as soon as what they were hoping to. So they called the uh, called Alice in route just as they left Dayton and asked um, Grandma and Grandpa to pick up Tukey, which they did. And they were going to keep her in a bedroom until uh, Connie and family, I think they all were coming, came to meet and greet Tukey. Then they were going to eat a real quick supper and they're on their way now. They should be back at their house, I think, by 8.30, 9 o'clock. So she's going to call me tomorrow and, and assure me that Tukey made it back safely. Uh, just to remind you, uh, Tukey's mama is was or is Mitty, and the siblings of Tukey is Gemini, Cobus, and Hudson. So um, that was a really that's a really cool litter of kitties. They've been wonderful. Uh, there's a possibility that we might have two adult cats leave tomorrow. And uh, they asked me who I kind of thought and listening to what they want and what their house is and those kind of things. I was kind of thinking of Bettina and Marja. Uh, I think they would do fine together. So we're going to see. Hopefully that will happen tomorrow. Uh, I forgot to mention last week that I had talked to Dave, who is the dad that adopted Sunoco, and he said Sunoco was doing just fine. Remember, we didn't have him very long. He's that long hair, um, golden white cat. This is my buddy. I love this cat. This is Tasco, and Tasco uh, is up on Pet Finders now. Remember, Tasco had been here as a wee tiny little baby, found down by the river. He was five weeks old when he came in was adopted and um, then they returned him because he was having potty accidents remember in the house he has been a hundred percent just fine he has not had any problems so we put him up on um, pet finders and we'll see what happens he's been superb here um, super friendly he's really good with the kitties and the cats I don't think he minds the dogs either actually he was in the dog room yesterday sleeping so some of the kitties have figured out on the wind on the uh, the window on the door we keep it down, and they've learned how to sail over. So they kind of go back and forth and visit the doggies and snug up under the blankies with them. Uh, today, Kurt finished all of the brackets today that uh, the 16. He's got the finish all done on that, and he's got the like fourth layer of finish on the plaque board. Uh, so early next week. He's going to, I think, start to get the plaque boards up, I think. But I uh, wanted to let you know, too, Kurt's actually going to go back to his home in Warren tomorrow. But it's only for one day. We're only going to let him go for one night. Um, we're going to try str tie strings and ropes and everything else to his vehicle and pull him back. But he's coming back on Monday. He's just going there to get his winter clothes and to see his mom and his dad. And... Um, do some things for them. So he'll, he's leaving Sunday, but we'll be back on Monday. And October 22nd, isn't, that's a week from today. Did you know you that's coming up? Okay. <laughs> Poor Connie, we're working her to pieces. Uh, that's our day at Elder Beerman, and that's for the community um, community day that they do. We sell, we're selling tickets right now for it. That's one of our fundraisers. Uh, we sell the tickets for $5, and when you take them to the store on the two community days, they're worth $10, but we get to keep 100% of that $5. So it's a it's a win-win situation all the way around. So in addition to us, I, I, uh, a couple weeks ago I passed out envelopes with all these coupons or tickets in them, and the volunteers are selling them right now. But in addition to doing that, two times we're sitting on at the doorway of Elder Beerman, and as the customers uh, go in and out, we can sell that to them then too. So hopefully we'll pick up some more sales. So
So that's next Saturday from 12 to 2, and Connie D. and Judy S. has, has uh, said that they would do that. Aren't they wonderful? So we've got some questions. Um, Hummer said something about her husband, and remember, I'm copying these down fast, so I might not have these all quite right, that there might be a chunk out of the belt of the washer. Well, in my opinion, there's a whole lot of chunks of everything that's in that washer. It's going to pot. It's, it's, uh, we just use them to death. The, the buttons that we're pressing now aren't working. It stops and it goes and it shakes and shimmers. And I did talk to the repair guy. The same thing that went out of it a year ago is the same thing that's doing it. And it's extremely expensive to replace that part. So we're not going to do it. We're just going to use it till it dies or I get tired of messing with it. It's just a, been a pain in the butt. But we're, we're going to try to keep it going, limping along as long as what we can. But I think there's a whole lot of chunks of something or another missing in it. Uh, Caddy Darling asked when... Oh, oh, there's my book. When Magenta had come. We had just done a story on Magenta not too long ago. Oh, and I had a couple of things to show you all, too. On Magenta, she originally came here in February of 03. She was adopted twice, came back, and now she's classified as our oldster that we are going to keep her here. Um, Nick, Nick asked about peach, and if we find peach, I will show you. We have three young torties, black and gold torties, and peach is one of them. She's the one that has like that gold uh, line down her forehead. I'll look for her, though. And Nuki's the one who asked for Connie to bring in the chicken. Mm. Nuki, so... I'll get you. <laughs> She'll get you. Uh, Rover asked about Tonio's story. Tonio was one of our oldsters. I, I think Tonio's picture is still up in Flickr, I think. Is it, Kurt? Yeah. Yeah, it is. And he was an awesome cat, a big uh, Siamese-type cat. I remember when the family brought him out to the clinic. He was an old guy then. I think I was telling Stacy, I think he was like 12 years old when he first arrived. Um, they just didn't want him anymore because they thought he was diabetic and didn't want to work with it. Well, it turned out he was not a diabetic and he lived here for a few years. Um, he was, he was cross-eyed. He just was one of the best oldsters. We get some of the best ones. We loved him. He, he passed away here, and he, he had a whole bunch of us with him when he did pass away. And um, he was just a cool guy. His name was Tonio, and he loved going in. Um, Tonio's down there. That's why it's named after him. Uh, Carolina asked about some kind of uh, some of the fundraising we do. This rescue center is ran purely by the money that we get from adoptions. Remember, every single kitty that goes out of here, I have a minimum of 200 to $250 in every single kitty, a minimum. And that's just like the startup fee things with maybe a couple of the flea preventions thrown in. It's ex they're, they're expensive, but uh, they, they, I, I won't back down on the medical things that we do. I think it's important that we send them out with all the things that we do do. But the adoption, even though we have a minimum of that two to two hundred and fifty, the adoption fee is only ninety. But I just, I just don't feel like I can raise that right now with the economy causing so much problem. Um, I don't take, um, I don't let people make payments on the cats. I always figure if they've got the money to do it or don't have the money to adopt, then what's going to happen when when they run into trouble like a broken leg or something. So they got to have the money up front to, to be able to do that. Some of our fundraising is um, just out and out donations. We do not have any um, county, state, or federal money that comes in here for us. That's your take for us. We don't. We just don't have that. And personally, I don't want that because when you start accepting some of those kind of um, avenues of money, it it makes you have to comply with some of the things that they want you to do. Right now, this is our rescue center, and we run it how we want to do it. And so there's no strings attached. We do it how we think is best for, for the kitties. But we do donations. Our chief tapes that 
that's uh, the container we have on top of the refrigerator and sometimes you might see people go over there with reach in and dump some papers in there and those are the cheap receipt tapes and we get 0.01 percent cash back no that doesn't sound like much but over the course of a year we probably get close to 900 to a thousand dollars out of that and that's all free money uh, the aluminum cans we get maybe somewhere between oh 60 70 80 sometimes 90 depends on the price of the aluminum a month so that adds up as well the calendars that Kate does we make about 5,000 I think it is somewhere right in there that's our biggest fundraiser uh, that we had up until this year when we then did the catathon and the, the catathon you know we raised 17,000 but that was a hundred percent earmarked for the new building so for operational cost I depend on the adoptions donations the cheap tapes um, the aluminum cans uh, donation and, and not just monetary donations but what you guys do you know when you guys send us things that helps us a lot we also I wanted to mention we save these uh, things that come off of fresh step their paw points award and the bags that some we were donated some of those they're they're the plastic ones but we save these and if you guys use that fresh step and don't save the coupons we'll take them just send them to us in the mail we collect them and uh, um, we get free litter for that and Frank asked where Wiggles is but I think Kurt showed Wiggles Wild asked how uh, CJ is doing and she's doing better today she still has a little bit of diarrhea we're still treating her she's a really hard cat to medicate but I think we got it in her again today uh, she's doing better she's eating better she acts a little perkier so I hope tomorrow's even a better day yet for her um, wild asked to see Bettina and I will see if she's sometimes she hangs in cats or the kitty campus room I'll see if she's back there uh, Nuki asked about how we do our adoptions how we make sure that the people that they're going to is who we want them to go to I I do a lot of talk and I ask lots of questions and I do reference checks um, they here see here comes Bettina she's the the black gold tortie mama she's a really nice girl a little shy but that's okay See, and she's kind of got that little gold mark on her nose and then peaches is, goes up higher she's really a dark dark tortie but on our adoptions um, I, I had some of the questions that are asked are do they have kids if they are what ages are there because there's some kids age that we don't let little kitties go with uh, are they are they respectful to cats we asked if there's any dogs if the dogs are um, neutered if they're on heartworm prevention and if they're on flea prevention if they do have other cats they have to be uh, leukemia and FIV tested they have to be current on their distemper vaccine and and flea free and they have to of course be a hundred percent indoor only we don't do the indoor outdoor thing and the reason for that is is because if you keep a cat inside like these are kept and you have a cat that's outside that goes in and out if the cat that is outside on any particular day has a fight with a cat or gets bit by a cat that has leukemia brings it in and then all your inside cats are jeopardized in their health so we don't do that they're inside the family of cats and it has to be inside only also <clears throat> um, so that's dogs cats and kids how many litter boxes so if they have two cats they must at least have two litter boxes preferably uh, a three we want a vet name and uh, to make sure that everything is neutered and current on vaccines and flea prevention things like that and that they actually have a vet is very important uh, do they rent uh, is it their their own house if it's if they rent we uh, I check and make sure that the landlord says it's okay that's the big one because so many of them will say yeah it's okay 
And then so I call and it's like, no way, Jose. They, they've never even asked and they don't have permission. So those we don't do. Um, they have to understand that this cat that they're adopting, if it doesn't work out, the cat has to come back here. Even if they were down in Oklahoma or somewhere, you know, the cat has to come back here to, uh, to our rescue center, not at a shelter, not anywhere else, not to a friend or family. Sometimes we have left a few go to families, but it's been another checked out deal. Um, finances, I always make sure that if the cat that they adopt, um, maybe say break a leg or get sick or something that financially they can afford to take the cat in. And a lot of it also depends on how things are here. If there's kids involved and they're not respectful, I've ushered more families out than what I care to even think about. It, it's disappointing sometimes how some of the kids are very res disrespectful. I have one kid here, I think I told you guys once, picked up a metal can and went kabong on a cat's head and they were out the door within a couple minutes. I was so upset with them. Um, but we get cats, kids in here that don't know how to hold cats or, or even know you know how to read them of when they wiggle to leave them down so what we've done in the past sometimes is ask those families to bring the kids back a couple times and to kind of practice here and to learn how to do it properly so those are some of the things um not everybody that asks for a kitty gets them nope we've turned down our share uh and sunny cat asked about a hematoma and i think you were referring to steve's hematoma a hematoma is just like a blood clot. There's different kinds and different, um, well, there's different kinds of hematomas, but some of them are like encapsulated, like that's what Steve's is. It's, it's in his calf, it's the eight inches, but it's, he had a huge bruise behind his knee and it sunk down, the blood did, and it just formed a capsulated pocket of blood that will reabsorb in his body, so it will be okay. But, you know, cats, uh, you, and dogs get those ear hematomas. You might have heard of that. And if cats or dogs have major ear mites or uh, ear infections and their ears bother them and they flip their head and flip their head, those blood vessels are so close to the outside of their ears that the blood vessels pop and then they bleed into the outside ear flap of the cat or the dog. It makes this big old bubble. And that's a surgical procedure to fix. Uh, usually when we when we would do them at where I used to work is they would uh, cut them open and you have to put a drain in there and then the ears are wrapped so that they don't flip their head anymore. It, and they usually end up with a little bit of like cauliflower type ears on them. So those are a couple kinds like that. And I had something to share with you. Here, you can be my guinea pig. Hope you can see that. Kurt William made this card out today. Holy moly, what happened in there? <laughs> Kurt William says, please vote for the rescue center. Right under the cam picture is a purple kitten. Click on it, and that'll, that'll make your vote. And he says, thank you. And I can smell it out here. Somebody used the litter box. You all um, have asked me in the past about Patience's pen that we use a lot here where Bella is. Patience was a wonderful oldster. This is Patience. This is the pen that uh, the cat, or this is the cat that the pen is named after. She was a wonderful, cool cat. This was a cat. I think she was 10 or 12. The family took her out to the shelter because she had fleas. And they just didn't want to deal with it anymore. You can see one of our cats who was a paper chewer chewed this. This is one of my favorite pictures about uh, patients. She's in her pen there. So they went out and got her. I asked them if they would go out and get her and bring her here. And we had her for a long, long time. Maybe Stacy would put those back in there. She looks a little bit like Emmeline, doesn't she? And I had one story here to share with you. I'm kind of being selfish because this is on my kitty in the house, K. Martina. She actually came here um, into the rescue center. 
Is that pretty good, Kurt? Most of my cats in the house are either physically handicapped or have um, health issues that they would not have been able to be pre um, adopted very well. This is Kay Martina when she first arrived at the rescue center. Both of her eyes were affected. This one was really bad. She had surgery. This was the morning of her surgery. Or this eye was just done. It was gone. And then this is her after her surgery. Fresh scar. And this is her the day following. And then this one is soon after. This is about when I adopted her. Her right eye is so terribly, terribly scarred that she she just doesn't have very much vision in that one either. But these are probably caused by a herpes virus that was left untreated. And uh, that's what happens to some of these poor guys out there. Thank you. You're so nice. So um, found early enough, you know, a lot of those eye diseases can be treated to the point where there's minimal scarring on that. So I think I answered everything. Hooray for Walmart for the 250 and the Animal Rescue for the $1,000 and our new collar we're going to try on Bella for nighttime. And for all your questions and thanks for joining us. Oh, I know there was one more thing I wanted to mention. We've been trying more and more just to show our appreciation to you by leaving the audio on more. And there's some days that it's on practically all day long. So don't be surprised when you tune in and you, you can hear. <laughs> there's been a couple times that I've forgotten. I probably have said things I shouldn't have said. And somebody told me today they accidentally said a bad word and they were very sorry. But we try to be as normal as what we, what we are here. So sometimes you might see us just forget that we always do forget I think that the cam is on most of the time but we try to mind everything so thank you for joining us and we're sure glad that you have and we'll see you tomorrow thank you one of the orneriest stinkers there could ever be. Say hi, everybody. You're just a rotten little baby, aren't you? She's just a rotten little baby. Yeah.